Hey guys and welcome to today's video where we'll be going through all the things you need to buy your leopard gecko. So if you're a beginner or you're getting into leopard geckos and you literally want a shopping list of things you need, this should cover everything. So we'll be covering the tank, heating, lighting, substrate, decorations, supplements and even food. Now speaking of food, today's video is actually sponsored by HelloFresh. Yes, we actually have a sponsor for this video and it's a sponsor I use and enjoy. So thank you to HelloFresh for supporting this channel. We'll get more into their service a little later on in this video. But let's crack on with the tanks. So the minimum size tank that I would recommend is a 20 gallon or a two foot long tank. So you can get a vivarium, a terrarium, or even a fish tank. Now in my experience, tanks open from the sides or the front seem to work better at not spooking your gecko. So it should make the handling and taming experience a little more successful, but geckos can live in fish tanks if you want. So some examples we have for you today is a Viv Exotic Reptile home, the Exoterra medium low, or just a general two foot long fish tank. And by the way, I will leave links to products below. So there is literally a shopping list below. Um, and if you're in the UK, you can actually just directly buy from there. Um, but yeah, I think this is a good starting point for a hatchling juvenile or even an adult sized leopard gecko. They can all live in this size tank. However, if the opportunity comes up and you're able to um, upgrade, I would definitely recommend upgrading to a three foot long or even a four foot long tank for an adult. Next up is heating. So there are quite a few different types of heaters on the market. Ceramic heat emitters, heat mats, heat tape, heat cable, deep heat projector, halogens, like the list goes on. But in this video, I'm going to keep it quite simple and look at three that I've covered before. The heat mat, ceramic heat emitter, and deep heat projector. All of these can benefit from being paired up with a light source during the day just to help your gecko distinguish day from night. And I believe all three are readily available throughout Europe and North America, so they should be quite easy to find. Now, the deep heat projector and ceramic heat emitter both need clamp lamps or ceramic lamp fittings in order to install them, depending on whether you're putting them in a vivarium or on top of mesh. Um, the, some people forget that, so I have had someone buy a deep heat projector and not realise you can't use it without one of these, so make sure you add that to your list, and also a thermostat. So each of these heaters have a specific thermostat they require in order to control the temperatures. Um, some people do get mixed up with thermostats and thermometers, very different things, but um, you will need a thermometer too. So you'll want a thermometer with a probe. You can get these from reptile shops. You can get these off eBay or Amazon. They all kind of work the same. One thing that is probably even better is a laser thermometer. They tend to be more um, accurate and you can take various readings of you know different areas of the tank however they don't give you that constant reading of temperature so I definitely think the digital one is needed so you have something that you can look over to the tank and see it's reading the correct temperature. Next up is lighting. So lighting was often classed as more of an optional extra. And for the longest time, I didn't even use lighting with my leopard geckos. I actually thought it would be a bad thing, but it really isn't. I would definitely recommend it now. So I'd say the most basic thing you could do is use a full spectrum LED. Um, so this is something that can help your gecko distinguish day from night, particularly good if you have your geckos in dark room. My room they grew up in um, was quite bright anyway, so I thought that would do, but honestly, like you can't go wrong with a full spectrum LED, and I use the Jungle Dawn LED bar, so that is the probably the easiest type of lighting you can install. However, if you did want to go down the UV route, I'd recommend the 7% UVB Pro T5 Shade Dweller, uh, that's what I use with all of mine. With the UV, of course, you do have to replace that every 12 months um, and you do need a fitting, but a lot of them come in kits, so you get the fitting with it. Um, obviously, when you're using UV, you want to make sure you install it correctly. Same with the heating. So I will leave a link to my video on how not to burn your reptiles here and below. Um, just if you're not too familiar with it and you want to make sure you do install everything correctly. Now, another light you can use is also a heater. I wouldn't say, if you're a beginner and you're just getting used to stuff, um, this may be a little more complex, but you could definitely start off with this. Um, 
is a halogen. So this is something I mentioned in the heating section, but it does provide visual light as well as heat. So there's infrared A and UVA. It works well alongside the deep heat projector. It does have to go off at night and it does require a thermostat. So it's a little more complex than the other two lights, but it's definitely one you could try out. Next up, substrate. So I'll keep this quite simple. You can use paper towel, reptile carpet, vinyl tiles that aren't self-adhesive, earth mix arid or a similar substrate, and you can mix organic topsoil with play sand. Uh, by the way, I go into far more detail about substrate and all these other topics in my ebook, which I am almost finished. So if you're watching this video in the future, definitely check out my merch store because the ebook may be available. Then we have decoration. So you want at least two to three hides. I really like this Exoterra hide um, for a cold or a shedding hide. You can also use wooden hides, resin hides, natural hides such as cork or slate. Um, they can work really well. Just make sure your leopard gecko is able to easily fit in the hide and move around. One issue people find when they have super small tanks like 10 gallon tanks is they can't fit decent sized hides in there. So that should be kind of a giveaway that the tank is too small. Uh, but yeah, one of the things I did in um, like Diego, actually all of my gecko's tanks are good about it, but Diego's tank, Gizmo tank and all that, is I went to the garden shop, I bought a massive chunk of slate, I broke it up, made sure the edges weren't sharp, um, and I created hides. And it's super cheap, super effective, and is very beneficial if you're using a heater such as a deep heat projector. You can also add fake plants in to give the tank a pop of colour or to provide additional coverage. Although fake plants aren't like a necessity, nor technically is a background, though I would argue that if you have a glass tank, I would suggest covering three sides of that tank to provide extra security for your gecko. There's nothing worse than a stressed gecko feeling super exposed because they are visible from every angle. So maybe consider a background. It doesn't have to be expensive. It can be as simple as putting cardboard around the outside, or you can have a printout that you get from like a fish shop to make it like some scenery, or you could go with a 3D background. You will also need a water bowl and a calcium dish, which the calcium dish you can make out of a bottle lid or I quite like these ones I got from Strudy's. Um, you can find that store on Etsy. I know a lot of people like that store. Um, you can also add a food bowl. What I will say is some feed insects obviously like crickets and locusts and stuff will not stay in it. Some geckos don't even use food bowls. Um, but it's one of those optional extras that you could buy and you could put in when you're offering, say, like mealworms or calcium worms. Now, speaking of food, let's quickly thank our sponsor for today, HelloFresh. Now, if you're not familiar with their service, HelloFresh provides mouth-watering seasonal recipes and fresh pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door. As you can see, HelloFresh have delivered so many ingredients this is just for three meals for two people and we didn't even have to leave the house now they offer so many recipes to choose from each week which personally i find very helpful because i don't know about you but i get into a bit of a like a recipe rut where i cook the same few meals week after week uh so it's really good to try new things with hello fresh now, HelloFresh offers a wide variety of quick and easy recipes, including 20 minute meals, easy cleanup, and low prep options. Hence, why I chose to cook the speedy chicken noodles, which literally did only take me about 20 minutes to make. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code LeopardGecko14 to get 14 free meals plus free shipping. So remember to use code LeopardGecko14 to get 14 free meals plus free shipping at HelloFresh.com. But now back to leopard gecko, so let's quickly look at food that you can give your leopard gecko. If you're buying from a breeder or shop and they can tell you what your gecko has been eating, it's good to carry that on, especially with the first week, the geckos can be a little bit picky with food because they're getting used to their new home. Uh, just make sure that food is healthy, like not just wax worms or something. Now, one thing I'd recommend is just getting a variety of food because leopard geckos, as I said, can be picky. Sometimes they'll eat anything. Sometimes they only want crickets for a week and suddenly decide they now love mealworms. You know what I mean? So you want a variety 
and you need to obviously house them in something. So I would recommend Critter Keepers, or at least big enough ones, not these little ones advertised for crickets. Uh, big enough plastic containers that are well ventilated for like crickets and locusts. I know there's specific setups for dubia roaches with like egg cartons and everything. Um, and then with mealworms, like a breeding colony, you can put in like a drawer setup like I've set up in a previous video. So it is true that when you take on a leopard gecko, you do kind of take on their food as well. It's not too much of a hassle, but you just have to get used to it. Also, make sure that if you can, you have the feed insects prepared like at least a few days before getting your gecko because then at least they can be gut loaded before the first feed. Finally, supplements. So this is kind of difficult to provide a specific answer for everyone because it really depends what's available to you. And I haven't tried every single brand of supplements out there, you know, so I can only recommend so much. What I will do, okay, so if you aren't using UV, and therefore you're probably going to be using synthetic vitamins, uh, you need a calcium or calcium and magnesium powder and then a separate vitamin and mineral powder that contains D3, okay? So as just a little rule of looking for your supplements, look for that. If you are using UV, like me, then I would recommend Earth Pro A, Calcium Pro Magnesium, and even Revitalize D3. So that's super simple things you can get. So I'm pretty sure that covers everything. Let me know if I've forgotten anything. I've had like the flu all week, so I'm sorry if I sound weird and I'm a bit all over the place, but uh, yeah, this is just the basics. You can certainly expand on everything I've spoken about today. Um, and as I said, there will be links below, so feel free to just take the shopping list from there. Uh, but yeah, I hope this video has helped. Thank you to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Definitely go check out that deal. That's amazing, 14 free meals plus free shipping use leopard gecko 14 uh but yeah thank you for watching guys and goodbye